So today we're going to talk about the Power Apps Portals Web API. This is currently in public preview, so it's not quite ready for general availability yet. But still, we can actually begin to play around and experiment and learn how it works and think of ways that it could apply to our Power Apps Portals projects. So as we get started, we need to make sure that we're on a version that will support the Web API. I believe it's 9.62.41 and 9.6, 9.2.6.4. Uh, 5.8. So we should be good to use the Portal Web API on this particular portal. One way you can ensure that you got the latest updates is in the Power Apps Portals Admin Center. Uh, right in the portal's details, if you scroll down, uh, you'll be able to make sure the Enable Portal for Early Upgrade is turned on. I don't recommend this for production portals. Um, good for your sandbox or your trial portals. Um, I have had issues where some new updates have uh, broken things. So I usually leave that off for production, but for Sandbox, definitely turn it on. So I'm going to walk you through a simple example, but I do recommend you check out the documentation. Microsoft has a pretty decent set of documentation about the web API, the operations, how it works, the site settings. So definitely check those out, read through those um, to get the, the nitty gritty. But uh, for now, I just want to kind of show you some very much some basic things. So this doesn't really relate to the portal, but it's the application that I built to track time entries. And this is what we're gonna use as our use case for our portal. So I've created a Canvas app where I can track particular items against particular projects that I'm working on. Uh, this can typically run on my phone so I can update my time from anywhere. And what it does is I'll put, it'll create an entry called a time entry, and I will be able to um, put some details in on that and then save that to uh, the data to Dataflex Pro, formerly known as the Common Data Service. So here's where that record looks like in a model-driven app that's talking to Dataflex Pro. So in the model-driven app, this is where we do the more advanced things like the project management, my invoicing, and a bunch of others. And you notice I've added an approved button there. So this is part of our use case. What we want to do is get our customers to approve our time entry systems that we put into the system. Now we're gonna get them to do that on a portal. So if I was just creating a straight up portal app, what I could do is create a list component and a form component um, to update this information. And then you could do it pretty quickly. However, I wanna be able to make it a little bit more slicker, a little bit more elegant. So all I'm doing here is I'm creating a web template. Um, I have a few uh, blog articles on how to set that up. It's using the fetch, so I'm retrieving my time entry data that's linked to that particular project. Uh, once I get that fetch, I'm going to go through all of those records and render those in an HTML table on the portal. So pretty straightforward stuff in terms of using Liquid and web templates. If you've done anything with Power Apps portals and extended a little bit, you should find this fairly com you should be fairly comfortable doing this kind of thing. So of course, if you've worked with Power Apps portals, you know that if you're using the fetch in Liquid, you're going to need to set up entity permissions. That's good ex uh, good advice no matter what you're doing. So here I've picked my time entry review. I can give it any name. I picked my entity name, which is the RBMS underscore time entry. That's the entity we're working with. And for the privileges, I need at least a read, but I'm also gonna add write because we're going to update that data from our portal using the portals API. I've, I've basically given it all permissions for now, but of course we would fine tune that for, fine -tune that for a particular project, but we do need entity permissions. And once you set up your entity permissions, of course, assign it to a web role. For now, I'm just going to assign it to the administrators, but you would need to set up a web role and associate that to your contacts that you want to have access to the particular page or the data that you want to update with the Portal Web API. So of course, once you create a web template, you need to create a corresponding page template. I won't get so much into this, into this video here about that. Check out the Microsoft Docs or MS Learn. Um, it's pretty good explaining that whole process, but at any rate, we do need to create a page template. And then finally, I'm gonna go into my Power Apps Portal Studio, and here I'm gonna create a brand new web page. And then for that web page, I'm going to use the Portal's Web API template that I created. That should be now part of your studio, so you can add that in and see it's already been rendering. If I wanted, I could actually go into the components and I can edit the web template directly in the studio. I can't yet create web templates uh, that might be coming down the road. Um, you could use this or you could use the XRM toolbox. It's really a matter of personal preference of where you wanted to edit your web templates. 
So now when we browse to the portal, we can see our time review page. We see a listing of our time reviews, entries. We see the checkbox because we're running that HTML. Now we can't do too much with this yet because we need to look at the code and how that's all wired in to use the, web, the portal web API. So we're finally getting to the good stuff. So what we have to set up in the portal management app, which of course is that model driven app where we set up portal metadata, we're gonna to have to add some site settings. There is an inner error there, which is set to true. We only need to set that up once. And then for each entity that we're gonna to wanna to use the portal web API for, we're gonna to need to set up that web API site setting and enable it, and then also specify the fields. Now you'll notice that for the particular fields for that entity, I chose star, which means all the fields are accessible. However, we can go in and we can specify only certain fields that are gonna be accessible through the, the web API. So it adds an extra layer of security and we already have entity permissions, but again, we can limit what we can use the portal web API for. So what we need to do, uh, taking a look at the, the steps on the documentation is we need to make sure we're retrieving a proper token. We need to make sure that the Dataflex Pro environment can trust the portal of which it's updating data. Now that may seem like a lot of steps. Uh, however, Microsoft has made this pretty easy. They provided a wrapper Ajax function. So all you really need to do is just copy that code and put it into your own web templates to use. You don't necessarily need to understand it, but you can definitely read through it. So it takes care of some of that uh, housekeeping that you would need to do. Now, what I like to do for things like this is create a separate web template for that. So I've created a web template using the XRM toolbox. Of course, you can do that directly through the portal management app. Now you need to create your script tags because this is JavaScript. So just add those script tags and then just paste that code in from the Microsoft website. Uh, pretty straightforward and you can save that and then, you, and then just reference that for each web template where you want to use the portal web API. Mm -hmm. So back in my web template where I'm showing um, the time entries, I've just added a, an include uh, wrapper Ajax tag using liquid directly in my web template. So I'll just need to add that one line to any web template going, for, going ahead that I want to use the portal web API. So that really simplifies things. So now we're going to get finally get to the fun stuff. So I've added a couple functions, uh, my web template. Again, I've added the script tags. And I'm calling this from my HTML. Uh, I have the on change there. Uh, if it's both an unapprove and approve, and I'm gonna pass the GUID of the particular record. So my function knows what record to update or what record to use in the portal API. So all of that is pretty much you know, straightforward. I'm showing, I'm showing whether it's checked or unchecked. Of course, earlier from the data retrieve, and we have the two functions here. They're pretty much identical. Of uh, the both of approve and unapprove, I'm just passing it the GUID. And then because I've had that reference into the, the web API or the, the web Ajax, I can actually call the functions directly now. Now I am using a patch. If I wanted to do a create, I would need to use a post, but here I'm actually updating records. The other thing I need to do within this function is the within the URL, I need to use the, the entity set name, not the necessarily the entity name. Now this kind of screwed me up a little bit a few times. Um, of course, if you're using the, the normal web API and CDS, you probably know all about this already. Of course, if we're using uh, Power Automate, we need to be aware of this as well. So I needed, it's the plural value. So it's RBMS time entries, not time entry. And then, so I've added that into that URL. And then of course, passing the GUID so it knows what record to update. We are gonna pass this using JSON. That's the data format it's looking for. We're going to stringify and we have the entity, the field name, RBMS underscore approved, and it is a Boolean field. So that's why we're passing it the value of true. We're only updating one field here. I could of course update multiple fields. I just really wanna keep this simple to get you guys going with this. And of course, there is some other stuff. There's some success in the console log. So if we are troubleshooting in our browser, we can just hit F12 and see what the response was from the portal web API. And of course, the unapprove is a little bit different. Instead, we're passing the false value to that Boolean value. But of course, this could be number, string, or objects, or whatever else. And again, I just want to keep this example really simple to get us going. So I'm back here at my model-driven app um, to that particular record we added earlier, of course, using the Canvas app. So we're tying in all three of our Power Apps portals types here. Um, and you'll see that the field is not approved yet. It's still, the approved is still showing no. So we want to update that on the portal. So let's take a look at that. 
So we've navigated back to our Power Apps portal. We see our listing of uh, time entries there. Uh, of course, you know our customers would log in and they would see that. And then that's it, click. <laughs> so all that work for a simple checkbox, but it's pretty neat. Let's go see what's gonna happen on the model-driven app. So we're back here and I'm just gonna hit refresh. And boom, there we see that the approved worked. It actually came from the Power Apps Portal Web API. Uh, of course, there's a lot more we can do with that. So of course, using that, we didn't use the entity form or web form to update the data. We take a look at the documentation. We see that there is the create, which is using the post command, which I mentioned earlier. We have an update. We also have a delete. So we can do those operations without navigating away from the page. So that's the real key here. Instead of using the entity form or web form, which will actually navigate and refresh the pages in the portal, we can call these functions in the background and update the data directly in DataFlex Pro also known as the Common Data Service. So if you're interested in learning more about Power Apps Portals and how to get started and how to build a portal, check out my class, Building Power Apps Portals. It's sitting on its new home at 365.training. Definitely sign up. Um, there's hands-on labs, quizzes, a lot of great content to get you ramped up on portals really fast if you have that background in either model-driven or Canvas apps. And I look forward to helping you out there.